नेक्स्ट पॉइंट डी आई बिहेवियर इलेक्शन ड्यूटी इज ओवर इलेक्शन ड्यूटी इज नॉट ओवर आई मैं डेट स्टेट इलेक्शन आर कमिंग अप डी आई विल नीड टू कंटिन्यू टू सपोर्ट द गवर्नमेंट द बिगेस्ट डी आई इज आर एल आई सी एन एस बी आई ऑल्सो फ्रॉम डी आई परस्पेक्टिव डोमेस्टिक सप्लाई इज ह्यूज एंड कंटिन्यूस दिस इज अ बिग एसेट फॉर देम दे गेट नेट न्यू मनी एवरी मंथ ऑल्सो बेस्ड अपॉन द करंट रिटेल बिहेवियर देर इज नो प्रेशर ऑन दम टू सेल एट ऑल बट वॉट इज ऑल्सो ट्रू इज देर इज अज प्रेशर टू कॉम्पीट Even for LIC these days the numbers are compared a lot, so they need to give comparative numbers compared to the private players, and it is not easy for them. For that they have to continuously book profits. That is why they trade also significantly. They trade aggressively. See the data here. Gross purchase one lakh seventy eight thousand eight twenty three crores. Gross sales one lakh sixty six thousand nine fifty one crores. Net buy is eleven thousand eight seventy two crores. This is 50% of the money that they got in June approximately. Now in the retail context, especially it impacts mutual funds also. This is a table of greed and fear. I'll discuss it very briefly. Suppose markets are falling 5, 10, 20, 30, and so on. Initial zone is of greed. People buy the fall. As the markets become cheaper, the fear factor actually comes in. People don't buy in this zone. The stocks are actually lot cheaper than the level at which retail was buying. The volumes die suddenly as the markets recover 10%, 20%. In the initial 10, 20%, retail typically does not buy. Retail is scared. Markets may fall again and go to lower levels. After further 30, 40, 50% kind of recovery, retail gets the courage back and starts deploying money slowly. That is where the greed part comes in again as the markets move towards new highs. Retail participation increases. New and new money gets deployed. This is a cycle that repeats every four to five years. The pandemic fall was approximately four years away. Next section is about critical commodities which we import a lot. Copper. India imports significant amount of copper. This is a ten-year graph. Copper is nearly at a ten-year high. Especially with the EV story, copper is a very critical metal. Rubber is essential for tires, for automobiles, as well as many other businesses. In ten years, if you leave this small spike out, rubber also is at a ten-year high. Zinc has fallen a bit. The irony is that India is a significant producer of zinc via Hindustan zinc, but Hindustan zinc exports 30 to 40 percent of the zinc it produces because prices internationally are very high. It is a private company, and India imports zinc for local consumption at a very high price from outside. Not an all-time high, but still a high price. Coal shot through after the pandemic during the Russia-Ukraine crisis touched internationally levels of 450. That level has now fallen to roughly around 135. Have you seen power prices go down? Silver, one of the critical industrial commodities, very expensive, nearly at an all-time high. Gold, all-time high. Natural gas, again, Russia-Ukraine crisis, international gas shot through from about sub two levels. It went to nearly ten levels. It came down sharply after that, around two. Has any of your cooking gas, vehicle gas become cheaper? Agri commodities, the MSPs were increased last year. There are talks of increasing further, especially because of coalition compulsions. This will lead to high inflation for sure. Number eight. Unprecedented retail loans. Typically, villages get free ration, but no free money these days. They have to take loans via microfinance. Urban people take consumer durable finance for homes. You have home finance. If you want to buy a tractor, you have farm equipment finance. If you are not getting salary, or if you have finished the salary, you get salary advances via loans. You have credit cards. You have interest-free EMIs. So there are enough avenues of borrowing money right from a farmer to a software engineer. This is a very interesting data published by Visual Capitalist. In terms of debt by country. India is now at number seven, about three trillion worth of debt, which is three percent of the world debt. So US is the largest one. Here is India. Globally, one phenomena which is happening is people are preferring to go deeper into debt versus defaulting. For example, in the 2008 mortgage crisis, lot of people could not afford the EMIs. They just let go of their properties. They said, "I can't pay. You forfeit the property." Now people are getting deeper and deeper into loans. They are maxing out their credit limits. This is a global trend. It is changing everywhere, including India. Mostly, what is happening is people are spending more and more of anticipated future earnings, which is not guaranteed. What happens if there are massive job losses? Number nine, there are few things you should watch for when the results for next quarter are announced. Somewhere around 10th of July is when the new result season will start. One is watch for FIDI holding changes. For example, this is HDFC Bank after the merger. If you see, FIDI holding has gone down from 52% to 48%. However, DI holding has gone up. Similarly, retail also has gone up. Watch for promoter holdings reducing. Promoters know the internals. They know whether their stocks are overvalued. At times, you see there is too much value on the table. They might say, okay, I'll send my holding. I'll dilute it. 
maybe two years, three years down the line, when the prices are more stable, then I'll buy back. So if promoter is reducing their holding, that is usually not a good sign unless you know the reasons. When institution holding goes down, retail holding goes up and promoter remains same, it is usually not a good sign. Also watch for games. For example, I strongly feel right now FIIs are buying back into HDFC. The data we have in our front is FIIs are selling HDFC bank because of March 2024 results. Suddenly next time you will suddenly see this number say at 54%. What will happen then? You will say FIIs are back. Let me buy HDFC bank. You will start buying HDFC bank. Who will sell? FIIs. There is no compulsion on them to not sell at that time. So watch out for these mind games. Also, this time watch out for quarter and quarter and year on year numbers. For example, Q1 numbers of 2024 will be compared with Q4 2023 numbers as well as Q1 2023 numbers. The older numbers will be high for many, many stocks for multiple reasons. And most financial websites publish these drops in bold red fonts without any reasoning. Retail panics dumps the stocks in the market at that time. So one, watch out for those numbers, maybe predict what will happen. Two, don't panic and sell after the result is published unless for sure something has gone wrong in that company. Watch out for the top 10, rather top 5 stocks that define the indices. The sentiment is associated with Nifty, Bank Nifty and that drives a lot of selling and buying behavior in the broader markets. One or two good quarters in the last year cannot be seen as the benchmark for future. Those lead to unrealistic expectations and when those expectations are not met, stocks tank. Also note that stock market PE is typically the forward PE. What you see on websites is current PE. How the stock prices reflect forward PE? What is the expected PE in the next 3 months, 6 months or 12 months? So always use the PE with a pinch of salt. Last point, few macro trends in simple English. Consumption is impacted by real earnings and real inflation not the published numbers. For example, if the published number for CPI is 4.5% as of 2-3 days back, but the inflation on the things that you consume is high, then your saving levels will drop. That will for sure impact your consumption. Currency printing is happening globally. In India also, currency is being printed. The last low was at demon time when a lot of currency went out of circulation. Since then, we have more than 3x of the currency in circulation. Till currency is printed by US, by India, stock markets will not go down. Unless, of course, if there is a pandemic-like situation. Take that with a pinch of salt. That does not mean you are getting richer if you are investing in the stock market. It just means that people who are not doing that, they are getting terribly poorer. India specifically, bonds have become real for retail. First, the unit size reduced from 10 lakh to 1 lakh. Now that 1 lakh also is getting reduced to about 10,000. This is great for investors. This is great for NBFCs. But banks are sulking. Why? Because CASA, which is current account saving bank account balance, and FDs are becoming a big issue for the banks. People are using bonds to park their money. People also understand that banks give a paltry return in the saving bank account, 2.5-3%. As a result, people are not keeping money in the bank accounts. Also, FD returns are paltry 6-7%. That too, RBI also guarantees 5 lakh only. So people have understood that money in the bank also is not very safe. As a result, interest rates may not come down significantly or come down at all. In US also, a Fed has indicated that this year, interest rate may be cut only once compared to the expectation that they may fall by 100 basis points approximately. So mostly 25 basis points or 50 basis points in US. In India also though CPI came down sharply 4.5% few days back. SBI actually increased interest rates across the board on the same day. Hope you found the inputs in this video useful. You may disagree with some of the inputs. That's perfectly okay as long as you gave it a fair thought. But do take an informed decision. There are times when we make a lot of money which was last few years for sure. And there are times when we have to be a bit prudent and save the money. Avoid losing a lot of it to a crash. I don't disagree with the long-term investment theory. Our age is not on everyone's side, that is one. And I totally agree with Warren Buffet and Charlie Munger's philosophy. First principle, don't lose money. Second principle, don't forget first principle. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.